Welcome to Lecture 4 of Biology 116 entitled Unicont Diversity 1 with a specific focus on the fungi. As we've been doing in the previous lectures, we're looking at the different complexities of life. We started off from studying virology, the study of viruses which were non-living. Then we went to prokaryotes which were a little bit more complex and certainly living forms of life and then we, in our previous video, we looked at protists, which are an incredibly diverse, incredibly confusing, incredibly crazy group of eukaryotic organisms, true cell organisms that are mostly single cellular, mostly in the form of algae, mostly photosynthetic, all of those things that we've covered. Now, the next logical progression in this um, stepwise increase of complexity in terms of life is to look at the unicons. And the unicons are gonna be covered in the next couple of lectures, but we're gonna first focus on the fungi part of the unicont diversity, um, as stated in the title of this lecture. Now, in order to begin, we have to, of course, begin with a, a bit of background in terms of what the fungi are. Um, specifically, the background will involve an evolutionary perspective of where fungi come from. So we'll entitle this first flowchart on the fungi, on Unicont Diversity 1 as background, and then in parentheses we'll write down Evo for evolutionary background. Essentially we're looking at the origin of fungi. Where did they come from? How did they arise? Just like we did for the protist lecture where we looked at domain eukarya, how it evolved. So now, in terms of fungi, we have to first establish uh, their origin. Uh, where did they arise from? Who are their common ancestors, let's say? And uh, what basic uh, evolutionary history do we have? Uh, this can be uh, best exemplified by figure 31.8. Um, the points that I'll be mentioning will be covered in this figure as well, uh, but the points are what uh, are important in terms of understanding the evolution of fungi history, let's say. So, in terms of origin, we can state that fungi must have evolved from a unicellular flagellated ancestor. Unicellular flagellated ancestor. And that probably, hopefully, is sounding like somebody that we've covered. We covered a lot of unicellular, flagellar um, ancestors in the protist lecture. Many of the protists uh, were exactly like this, unicellular and flagellated. Um, in terms of understanding further the origin, we can also state the following. We can also state that animals, fungi, and related protists, so let's write this down, animals, fungi, and those who are closely related in terms of protists and related protists uh, form the opistocont clade. Form the opistocont. And this is something that we covered in our one of our la latter videos in the protist lecture, the opistocons. And so we have animals. We have fungi that's of interest to us today, and some of the closely related protists to both animals and fungi within the opista conclave. Um, within this origin idea of this evolution from a unicellular flagellated ancestor within the opista conclave, we can also state the following. Animals and fungi, animals plus fungi, which are two separate entities. Fungi are not plants. Animals are not plants. They're not protists. Fungi are not plants. They're not protists. They're two separate, completely diverged entities. And speaking of that divergence, animals and fungi may have diverged into separate lineages. May have diverged into separate lineages. And that's the point I was trying to emphasize by the fact that animals and fungi are two separate entities in speaking of their origin in, uh, in relation to their evolutionary history. So two separate lineages. And this separation, this divergence, probably happened uh, about 1 to 1.5 billion years ago. So it's a long evolutionary process, just like all of evolution is. It's not just they diverged one day and became animals and fungi, two separate entities. It took a while for these lineages to diverge from each other, from this original unicellular flagellated ancestor component that we've mentioned. Now, uh, a term, a protist, that you should remember in terms of the origin of fungi is the following. The nuclearids. This is something we covered in one of the last videos of protists. Nuclearids are important because this is... Uh, or they were, uh, and they still are, heterotrophic amoebas. 
heterotrophic, so they have to obtain organic material from their environment, heterotrophic amoebas, but more specifically, or more broadly actually, um, these are all protists. If we remember from our previous lecture, these are protists that we covered and we mentioned explicitly. Why did we mention them explicitly? Because these are the closest ancestors of fungi. So we'll write that down as close ancestors of fungi. And so we assume that fungi came from these nuclearid common ancestors. This was probably the best guess as far as to, in, in regards to this unicellular flagellated ancestor, probably a nuclearid, this protist, this early form of life, uh, eventually evolved into the fungi. And that's what our origin history of evolution, evolution of fungi, really tells us based off of these facts. So that's our origin. Now, one thing we have to mention is that protists, for the most part, uh, were always found where? They were always found in the water, either freshwater, marine water, whatever it may have been. But fungi, for the most part, are actually found on land. And that's a critical point in understanding the background, the evolution of fungi. And that, that, that transition into land is called the following. It's called the colonization of land. It's a separate topic than the origin, but it's still an important part of their evolutionary history the colonization of land, an absolutely critical part of their success, an absolutely critical part of their history altogether. So what is the colonization of land? One thing you need to understand about this moment is that fungi actually were able to colonize land before plants. Before plants. This is something that's always asked of students. Well, who colonized land first? It was definitely the fungi. Fungi were before the plants. And plants, uh, they were able to colonize land about 470 million years ago. Plants were about 470 million years ago, whereas the fungi diverged away about 1 to 1.5 billion years ago. So there's clearly a lot more time for fungi to be on land, and thus we're going to see the ramifications of this moment, of this colonization of land, and just how much diversity in the fungi we see as well, because they were able to take hold of this land and really, really capitalize on the fact that they are now on land and no longer in water. And they, of course, did this before plants based off of the histories that we have. Now, another point to remember is the following. Before plant colonization, okay, before plant colonization, a.k.a. the colonization that the fungi did, this was all before the plants colonized land, um, life on Earth was, the, was usually referred to as the following. Life on Earth the planet, uh, the one that we live on, uh, was equal to something called the green slime earth. This is the term you might hear. It was a green slime earth. Now, why was land called the green slime earth? This was because most of land was occupied, or even the water was occupied by cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria, of course, have the photosynthetic capabilities, and thus they have chlorophyll, thus they are probably green, and they're actually pretty slimy in their nature. Um, there's also a Tons and tons, as, as we definitely saw in our previous lecture, tons and tons of algae, which definitely classify as green slime sort of things. And then also on land, there were these small, small heterotrophs. Small multicellular heterotrophs for the most part. And these heterotrophs, guess who they were? These were the fungi. And fungi are uh, exactly what you would think they are. They are part of this green slime uh, conglomerate of organisms, cyanobacteria, algae, and fungi. All of this is how the earth was before the plants came on, before the plants. Um, so this is how we would classify the earth that we're studying right now in terms of the origin and evolutionary history of fungi. Finally, last thing to understand about their background, about their evolution, is that fungi, just like protists, have very, very diverse lineages. They are very, very old. They are very, very successful for that reason. Um, we have uh, identified about 100,000 different species of fungi, so S double P because we're talking about more than one species. So identified, and of course, always when we talk about something that's identified, we juxtapose it with how many we think there are, and we actually think that there are about 1.5 million, 1.5 million actual species are likely based off of um, guesses and estimates um, that most scientists have. 
biologists specifically about how many species of fungi there are and there are five major groups of these fungi. Um, these five major groups are created so that they it's easier for us to understand their classification, their taxonomy, their phylogeny, all of those classification techniques that we've mentioned in previous lectures. So that covers our background, our evolution. Very diverse background, very important origin and colonization of land being a big big point at which fungi really were successful and remember the diverse lineages that we have. Certainly a lot, a lot more to discover.